in Hawaii, there is the Qualcomm Snapdragon event. And this is where we're finding about, about all the information about 5G. I think there's some phones that have been revealed. There's, everything's happening really fast. And to just get to the bottom of it, we've brought on Christian DeLooper, one of our writers here for Digital Trends, who is in Hawaii right now, uh, really rough assignment, I'm sure, uh, to talk about what's going on at the Snapdragon event. Hi, Christian. Hey, Greg, how you doing? Doing great. Um, Good. So this event's been going on for a couple of days now. Is that right? Yeah, so yesterday was the first day. Yesterday we kind of focused on 5G and now we're on day two, which is kind of the Snapdragon day. Um, so we'll get a new mobile chip today. And then tomorrow is always on computing. Okay. Which is like connected laptops, LTA connected laptops. So why don't we start from the beginning of what happened yesterday? You know, 5G is something, it's been a hot topic here just on our show, just in tech trends in general. You know, everybody wants to talk about 5G and when we're going to get it. What kind of information did we find out yesterday at the, at the event? Yes, yeah, so um, not a whole lot. It's still mostly talk. Um, there's some interesting stuff. You know, Qualcomm, the, the new Snapdragon 855 processor is, is um, supports the X50 modem, which is 5G compatible. Okay. Um, Verizon and AT&T had so-called live 5G networks here yesterday, but they were pretty limited. Um, they had a few little devices set up, but you couldn't move them because they were connected perfectly. And you know, it, it's really not set up the way that we're expecting it to be eventually. Yeah, because um, 5G is supposed to be, you know, uh, one of the main things is so fast, you know, extremely yeah. fast. And it's, it's going to be the new system. And especially the way everybody's touting it is that, you know, we're going to have 5G. It, they make it sound like we're going to have it, you know, next month, but that's not the case. No, that's not the case. There's a lot of talk, there's a lot of hype. Um, it's exciting, it's gonna be really cool, but it's gonna be a while before we see it in the real world. So at the event yesterday, you know, they're showcasing those kinds of things, uh, you know, showcasing some of the devices, talking about 5G, or that was two days ago, excuse me. Yesterday, I'm getting my days mixed yesterday. up. Yesterday. <laughs> now today, I've already seen a bunch of information come out about some different uh, devices that they were talking about, that they were showcasing. Is that right? Yeah, so uh, Motorola announced the Z3, uh, I think last year, and along with it, they announced the Moto mod, the 5G Moto mod, which is kind of a, a thing that you stick to the back of the Moto Z3 and um, it gets 5G connectivity. Um, so Motorola was kind of showing that off yesterday in a very limited capacity. We couldn't touch it. We could really only look at them downloading a file. And um, Samsung was showing off a, a concept device for 5G as well. Which it's in a concept device. So it's basically just a yeah. phone and they said, oh yeah, it's got 5G, just trust me. Pretty much, that's, that's pretty much it. Another phone we couldn't touch, only look. <laughs> <laughs> and for, for everybody tuning into, this is, that's kind of a common thing I feel like for even at CES when they have experimental technology or stuff that they claim they've been working on, they don't really want people to get their hands on it because you can yeah. expose some of the flaws I assume. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a tricky situation. We're kind of in an in-between period where, you know, we've been talking about 5G for a long time. It's going to start rolling out next year, apparently, so we're told. So the, the tech is mostly there, but it's not completely there. Um, I think they probably wanted to be able to show off a little more and probably wanted it to be a little more fleshed out, but that's the way it is. But that's where it's at, yeah. Um, and let's get into some more 5G too. I want to remind everybody, if you have questions and comments, you can drop those in and we'll, we'll uh, ask Christian these and see if we can get to the bottom of what's going on there. Um, just for this event, how does this lay out? Like what kind of players are there? Because it's Qualcomm's event, is that right? Yes, yeah, Qualcomm's event. Uh, yesterday, like I said, we had Verizon and AT&T showing off their live networks. Yeah. Um, Samsung and Motorola were there as well. Um, those are mostly the big companies that we had yesterday. There could be more today. We're not. We're not sure yet. No. Okay. Oh, so you don't even know either. It could just. They just kind of show up. Well, sometimes they bring out surprise. Yeah. Surprise. But the big ones are Verizon, AT and T, Samsung, and Motorola. I want to get into talking about the actual processor here in a minute. But before we do that, let's maybe do a recap of five G. Like, what is five G supposed to be able to do for everyone? Just to kind of go well, through some of the highlights. An interesting question. Like. Um, I was talking to a Qualcomm representative yesterday and they were like, well, when 4G was launched, we didn't have Pokemon Go, we didn't have Snapchat. Mm -hmm. um, LTE kind of allowed for those kinds of things. So the question is, what will 5G allow for? And we don't know because they haven't been invented yet. But we do know that they'll probably connect cars to each other. They'll probably allow for, you know, just faster downloads, 4K streaming on your phone, that kind of thing. Um, so we'll see is, is the right. answer. Yeah. 
And there was a demonstration that we're showing right now that was uh, downloading a, a gig of data. I think it was in oh, 19 yeah. seconds on 5G, which is you know incredibly fast if that does come in come into fruition. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I know some of the other things I was I was kind of reading about just with 5G. You you mentioned it, the 4K streaming ability, which that's I mean, 5G sounds amazing. You know, I, <laughs> I think we all I think everybody can agree on that. This sounds really really cool. Um, when we're going to get it though is the big kind of question, and what yeah. it's going to take to implement that. Like, what do they need for the infrastructure to even make 5G happen? Well, they really have to upgrade their towers. Um, that there's probably going to be products that they put into homes um, for like kind of home 5G. We saw Verizon launch an initial version of that last year, kind of mm -hmm. a, a testing thing. Um, so it's going to be a while. It's going to come in a few select cities probably by the end of next year. And hopefully by 2020, most major cities will have decent 5G connectivity. But yeah, like you said, it's going to be a few years before yeah. we have any financial infrastructure in place. Even though the devices will be out there ahead of time where, that you can... Uh that you can get. Yeah, that that's will be correct. 5G Even though we're still devices in the real world next yeah. year. <laughs> um, let's talk about the Snapdragon 855 processor. So this is the upgrade over the 845, and you know this is, is getting a little technical on it, but I mean this is what's running most of these devices is the yeah. Snap Qualcomm processors. What's the 855, this new processor, going to do? Yeah, so it was announced yesterday, but today is the 855 day. That's when they're going to go into details. So we don't have all the details yet. We know that it's going to be faster and more powerful. It's going to allow for 5G for manufacturers who want to include 5G. It does not include it by default. Um, and there's a heavy focus on AI, which is cool. So features like Google Assistant, more on device processing instead of you know sending to the cloud and that kind of thing. But as far as specifics, we'll get those in a few hours. You, the on-device processing, I think that's kind of a, a a really cool aspect, especially as we use assistants more and more on our phones. It doesn't have to go to the cloud. So you can yeah. be right there and it'll have all of that information stored. It can process it quicker. And uh, I was thinking about this just you know, from a security standpoint, it seems like that would be a good, a good addition. Yeah, absolutely. That's the idea. Um, I think it'll take companies like Google to implement that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but theoretically with this chip, it'll make it much more easier. So that's the Snapdragon 855 processor. And we've got some great write-ups at digitaltrends.com too, kind of going through all of these and discussing you know, what's, what's happening with this and, uh, and letting everyone know, you know what's going on out at this event. And uh, Christian, anything else that you're looking forward to or hoping to see while you're out there? Well, hopefully we'll see a few phones today. Probably, probably not, the, the chip's just being announced today. Um, Tomorrow is always connected PCs, which is, is interesting. You know, it's um, Qualcomm chips in laptops, which allows for longer battery life and LTE connectivity and that kind of thing. I think most of the ex like big exciting stuff that we're expecting was yesterday. Today, chips. <laughs> yeah, chips. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with that. Well, thank you so much for hopping on here today, you know, to let us know. Um, have a good time while you're in Hawaii and, uh, and keeping us up to date on everything that's happening with that. This, is, uh, this has been great. Thanks so much, Christian. Yeah, no worries. Thank you.